So um, I'm going to start with an apology and say that this is going to be a quick and probably not very good video trying to talk a little bit about the assembly of this plotter. This is the extra H plotter. Um, most of the parts 3D printed. Anything you can see that's orange or grey is 3D printed and the other parts are extruded aluminium or other, some other pits like bolts and pulleys and so on. I did have a much better video planned and I had very much hoped to be able to put that together. I had most of it filmed but I had a PC failure and lots of other problems and it meant that I didn't have time to complete it. So this is just going to be a very quick whirlwind tour around all the different parts to try and show which bit fits to which part so that you can have an idea of how things go together. And I'll talk about some of the bits that perhaps might be a little bit harder to spot in terms of how things and the order of things have to go together. But as I said, apologies, this isn't what I'd originally planned, but hopefully it'll be a little bit more useful if you're trying to put one together. We'll start at the corner down here. Um, you can see you have the big foot which fastens the black rail to the baseboard. You need four of those, one for each corner. And as you can see, I actually don't have all of the screws fitted in. Um, those are sized to not go through the baseboard so as not to scratch things. Um, and they're fastened to the rails with um, T-nuts in here. The end parts, these are again fastened with T-nuts. They go into the rails for T-nuts. Um, there's one base part and then there's another part which supports the pulley. Um, you need uh, M3 bolts to go through into that. There's some tapped holes in the underneath. So this is actually two parts and it goes together to support this. At the other end of each rail you're going to see the servo, the stepper fixture, sorry. Uh, the stepper fixtures, these are the latest version and if you're going to print it I would very much recommend that you get this version. This is the one that has, as you can see, significantly more depth and that helps it to prevent the tension in the belt creeping um, the thinner original mounts together. This little thing on top, this is just a pen height guide. That's um, something which I made. It's very much not <laughs> core to the thing. Um, the first most complicated part is this assembly here. This is the main carriage. Um, this part here is actually experimental, this grey part. You're not going to see that in the files because I'm still not convinced it's a good idea. It's actually a belt support to try to stop the belt bouncing around, but it seems like it doesn't actually produce that big an effect, so I'm not sure I'm going to upload that. Either way, all the orange parts are the things that you will find in the assembly. Um, there are two main parts here. There's the base and the top. And then there's this support which goes on top of that. The base and support are the main parts and they're very important for getting the machine accurate. You need to print these with a pretty decent number of perimeters. Um, infill I think doesn't make a huge difference but probably minimum three perimeters for these parts here. Um, infill really just enough to hold up the top surface so you know five or ten percent is probably okay but yeah at least three perimeters and plenty of so top solid um, top and bottom solid layers maybe at least four maybe four maybe ten layers um, and the idea is that these things will go together and um, you have three rollers that fit into the rail there's two on the outside and one on the inside and this one has a um, uh, screw here which can be used to just put a little bit of tension on it not too much you can very easily crack these wheels if you put a huge amount of tension on it so do be cautious it's just enough to make sure that things fit together the order of operations for this is a little bit um, a little bit tricky um, because the um, horizontal rail is actually fastened onto this top carriage with T-nuts, you're going to need to um, fit this and the rail together first. So you do this, um, you put the belt in, you tighten that up from underneath, and then this part goes onto the top also with T-nuts. And then the other parts just get tapped into the surface and um, they support the pulleys. Once you've done that, you can then look to put the lower part on, which gets fastened on with these and um, goes through on each of the four corners with the larger nuts. This one just goes straight through, but they all have nuts on the bottom. This one just goes straight through and all of the others have um, wheels.
on there as well. And there are some spacers up here which are used to fill in the space between the wheel and the top and that's to ensure that you probably, I think most of these are designed, you don't need supports for them, but do keep an eye for any overhangs. But the idea is this all goes together and once that's done and once you've then also done the other side, those can then be fitted together into this overall assembly. You can slot that onto the rails and once you have that, you're then going to be in a position to be actually to fasten these feet in place. Don't fasten the feet to the board until you have this assembly done, you're happy with it because you're going to need to pull it to one end. Excuse me, this is actually wired up to the board so I don't want to move it fast. You have it at one end. At the other end, you can then fasten this in, not necessarily fully, maybe with one or two screws. And then once you've done that, it can be moved up to the other end and then that should mean that you can fasten these ends down without any concerns about things binding up. So do make sure that you have the um, this axis here assembled before you fully fix it to the baseboard. But it does need to be fully fixed to the baseboard. It isn't possible to run this without supports. It does require that to maintain the, uh, maintain the machine internally. So those are the first sort of semi-complex parts. The next part that's again a little bit more tricky is the pen carriage. And the pen carriage has two main parts that actually support the movement along the axis. This is the back and this is the front. The front is the part that holds the pen lift assembly. Um, but you don't need to assemble this straight away and you can actually check that the machine works without this, um, at least in terms of X and Y. And the idea is that this is part of the belt tensioning system. So what you can do is clamp the belt here. It rolls around here, comes out, comes along, goes through the return rollers, back through the stepper, through this part here, along here. It passes through the carriage here. It does not touch it. It doesn't have to be fixed. Around the other side and around, coming back in an H shape until this one comes through here and then is anchored there. And what you need to do is to have these fastened somewhat loosely in around about the right position that you want them. Certainly one of them can be put pretty solidly. But the idea is that you don't need to tension the belt with these. You can clamp these at the right level, at the right, approximately the right length. And then one of these can be slid until you get the right tension. So you pull reasonably hard on this and then anchor it with one, pull it a little bit, anchor with the other, and then the belt should be reasonably solid. And again, you want a low note from this. The belt tension shouldn't be very, very high. Um, if you have very high belt tension, you do run the chance of overloading some of the pulleys, and making things bind up. It should be a relatively solid tension, not slack, but with a reasonable amount of tension. The pen lift is something that's a little bit, I've done quite a few iterations on this, and it is admittedly a little bit awkward to see how things go together. Unfortunately, because it's, I wanted something that was more compact than I'd had previously, uh, putting it together isn't super obvious. What you have, first of all, is the pen holder here. And this is something which is generally something OK to leave until last. There's just a couple of holes there. But as you can see, if I lift this up and down, it actually doesn't come out. This is actually captive. The reason it's captive is that the thing that actually does the lift, and it's going to be a little tricky to see, but the thing that actually does the lift is a little... M3 screw that goes in there and it actually projects into this part of the frame and that is the part that engages with the servo horn so I'm just going to see if I can find the angle you can just I think about see the servo horn there and the idea is that is currently resting on the servo horn and as it goes up and down it can be lifted um, what that means, though, in practical terms, is that you can assemble the lift part here by putting on the bolts and the screws. They should be sized to not come through from the other side. 
you can potentially tension them a little bit. Again, you know, you've got to be careful because it can splay. Um, but this can be assembled once you've got this and you've got the bolt for the pen lift at approximately the right size and you've assembled this interface plate here, what you can do is get things in the right orientation and slide this in place between the two. So you hold this in the right orientation, slide that down to locate over the T-nuts here, and then you can fasten it so that it doesn't, it doesn't move. But that is a little bit awkward. It's nice and compact, which means that it's relatively stiff. But the idea is that this is then something that can be close to this. It's not going to move around too much. It keeps it relatively stiff. But you do have to drop this down afterwards. Um, so that implies the first thing to do. And oh, by the way, this doesn't have to be done in situ. This can be done, this part not bolted to the carriage. With all of that, it's basically then wiring. You can see the servo wire, which I've got looped over some stiff plastic tubing, which comes down to here. Um, I then have various cable management things to loop around the slack. Um, some of these are stress relief to make sure that they're not putting strain on the um, board. You can see here, this is an iBot board. It's an iBot board clone. So this isn't an iBot board that's an original one. I do have one of those, but that lives in the eggbot. So this is a clone. I honestly don't think you can buy these anymore. Um, unfortunately, they were very good. It was quite nice because it had a couple of options for um, connections, which was quite nice, but it's not actually possible. And so um, the idea is this gives you a few options to make sure that you can let it. It is possible to do a other electronics. I don't know what other options there are going to be. Um, and I can't help you, unfortunately, with that. The only thing I've ever really tested this with is this which means it can work with the Inkscape extensions for an Axi Draw because although this does look very different to an Axi Draw kinematically, it's kind of similar to an Axi Draw only inside out. Um, and so there's relatively few bits of software code that get into it. If you do want to build one of these, I would recommend getting the files from Printables, not Thingiverse. Thingiverse, I find it more tricky to get the documentation and things in place, so I primarily keep um, Printables up to date. Hopefully that's useful. Apologies if it's not, and apologies for the format of this video. It's um, not really what I would have hoped to do, but unfortunately I didn't have a lot of choice. Thank you very much. See you later. Bye-bye.